So it's definitely feeling more autumnal at the moment and that is going to be the theme of this week's tutorial. Instead of doing one big thing that's a bit more detailed, I'm doing something different today. So I've got lots of mini tutorials for you on all the things that remind me of autumn. So leaves and mushrooms and acorns. And we're gonna create a bit of a compilation of really loose style, simple watercolor sketches. I'll list the equipment and colours used in the description box below, but for this I used Hansa Yellow Light, New Gamboge, Pyrrole Scarlet, French Ultramarine and Van Dyke Brown. It doesn't matter if you don't have the same tones as this, um, the Hansa Yellow Light is just a nice cool yellow. You could mix some red in to get that orange, that New Gamboge colour in the middle. The red was just a nice bright red, so anything along the same lines will be fine. Um, French Ultramarine is the standard blue that I use, but it's not essential. And Van Dyke Brown is just a nice dark colour for some of the shadow details. For the brushes, I used my number six round brush, which was used for most of this painting. And I used my number three rigger for some of the fine details. I also used some white gouache for a couple of highlights on one of the fly agaric mushrooms at the end. This is what I use for my palette. So I put the colors on the edge and I mix everything in the center. They tend to merge together a little bit. So it's sometimes difficult to remember exactly what colors are in there as everything swirls together. Um, but for these, it really doesn't matter. The idea is that they're just really loose and simple and easy and quick to do. So you can use whatever colors you've got to hand and that way we can be as creative as we want and make them really different and unique. And after all of that information, I think it's about time to get started painting. So I'm gonna begin with a fly agaric mushroom. I'm gonna put that in the top hand corner there. I've painted one of these before. So if you want to see that with a bit of a background to it, I'll link the video to that here. For this one, I'm starting with Pyrrole Scarlet and we're gonna begin by drawing a semicircle for the cap of the mushroom. Unfortunately, the camera was a little out of focus when I started the Fly Agaric painting. It does resolve itself and it will be much more in focus for the rest of them. And towards the end of the Fly Agaric, you'll be able to see that in more detail. I decided to keep it in anyway, just because you can still see what's happening underneath and it doesn't last that long. Um, but yes, apologies for the blurriness. It will be resolved shortly. <laughs> so to begin with, I'm taking my bright red colour and I'm creating a semicircle as you can see here. Fly agarics come in all shapes and sizes, so I'm gonna do another one next to it to show you just how different they can be. And it really doesn't matter if yours doesn't look exactly the same as this. Um, so we're gonna do two versions and you can see those side by side. And while the paint is still wet, I'm going to mix up a darker red. So I'm putting in some blue with the red mix and I'm going to drop that on the bottom of the mushrooms. I'm also going to tilt the paper a little bit. So that is uh, encouraged to run up and blend with the red that we added before. Next, I'm mixing my blue with my red and quite a lot of water to create a nice purple tone. And I'm going to use that for a light stalk for the mushroom. I'm going to touch it to the bottom of the cap of the mushroom and that way the colour is going to seep down into it and we're going to get some really nice tones. I'm creating a bit of a lampshade shape uh, with the top of this and I'm creating a jagged edge at the bottom so it looks a bit more realistic. And then I'm adding a smaller stalk underneath the first and we're going to do the same thing for both of these. And again, while the paint is still wet, I'm taking a darker version of that color. So a darker purple with the blue and red mixed together. And I'm gonna drop that on the top to create some shadow details. Every time I add a layer on top, I'm making sure it's a little bit thicker than the one I put down previously. And that way it's gonna sit on top nicely rather than create any back runs that I don't want. Using my rigger brush, I'm adding some of those purple shadow tones to the cap of the mushroom. And these are gonna be uh, shadows to some of the white dots that I'm gonna add on with white gouache later. And we're in focus once more. <laughs> I'm using my brush just to lift out some highlights. So to do this, you need the paint to still be wet underneath. The brush itself should be just a little bit damp. You don't want it to be full of water because that's going to create some back runs. And every time I lift the paint out, I'm wiping that either on a towel or a paper towel and then going back in to do it again. 
Next up we have some autumnal trees and you can really use whatever colours you like for this. The idea is that you'll start with a lighter colour and then you'll get darker as it progresses. I've mixed some Hansa Yellow Light and French Ultramarine for this and there's quite a lot of water and paint mixed together and I'm just dotting that on the page in random motions. I'm not being too precise about this at all, I'm just kind of dragging the brush along and creating a rough tree shape. And while that paint is still wet, I'm going to drop in some darker shades. So I'm going to mix in some new gamboge, perhaps a little bit of red and brown as well. Anything that's quite autumnal and I'm going to drop that over the top of it. Not covering every area, just covering slightly less each time and building up a tiny little tree here. There's a really lovely silver birch nearby that has inspired this painting so I'm going to try and create a silver birch for this little autumn sketch. I'm mixing some purple so I really like wash of blue and red for the trunk and I'm going to add that now and then lift out some of the darker areas to preserve the white highlights of the trunk. Silver birches have quite a light trunk and sometimes that's difficult to draw on a white background. It's a bit easier if the background is darker and you can just lift it out. But I've lifted out um, the centre of the trunk there so you've got purple around the edges and I'm adding in a couple of really light purple twigs and branches throughout the rest of it as well. You could make things easier for yourself and do a different type of tree with a brown trunk. So I'm just connecting different leaf shapes here with tiny little twigs. They don't need to go all the way through the tree and they're going to look a bit different in everybody's paintings depending on where you placed your leaf shapes in the first place. Um, I'm also going to add a little bit of detail to the trunk of the silver birch. So I've got a darker grey colour of that purple and red mixed together, sorry, blue and red mixed together. And I'm putting in a few details there that I'm going to soften out with water. Even when I'm trying to do a loose style painting, I can't help but add detail in. But for me, it just helps to finish, finish it off. You could leave the tree alone here and it would be perfectly fine, but I'm going to add some grass underneath so it's sitting in the landscape. I'm mixing some French ultramarine to some of the orangey colours from the tree so it's all tied in together nicely and just creating a little bit of an area for the tree to sit on. I'm also going to add some splatters to the tree because I feel like I haven't done that enough recently. So I got one of the darkest colours that I used on the tree and now I'm just tapping the back of the brush to add a bit of detail over the top of that. Here's a sped up version of another variation of this tree just to give you another example. These are really fun to do and I could have filled the whole page with these but I will just stick with two for now. I added a few of the orange and yellow shapes into the grass underneath when I'd finished too, just to indicate some falling leaves and finished everything off with a few splatters. I think that ties it together quite nicely. Moving on to the first leaf example, this is an oak leaf. So I'm starting out with a curve at the top. There's two bumps on either side of the leaf and they end in a tapered end, which is going to lead to the stalk of the leaf. I've mixed up this green using French Ultramarine and New Gamboge, which has helped to create a nice autumnal green, I think. And then I'm only going to put one extra layer of paint on top of this to try and keep it super simple and loose. So I'm going to add some red and some more New Gamboge into that green, and that's going to create this lovely rusty orange colour, which I'm just going to dot over the top. And then to finish this off, I'm going to scratch in some leaf details. Um, I probably could have done this with the end of the brush as well um, instead. And that's going to draw out the veins of the leaf instead of painting them in. And I think that's probably about it. I'm not going to do much more with this one. And I guess if you're going to have an oak leaf, you should probably have an acorn. So I'm going to sketch that in loosely now with this paint here. This is similar to the rusty orange colour that I used on the leaf. You could do any kind of colour for the base of an acorn because they all come in different shapes and sizes and colours. So you can be quite creative with this. 
All I'm doing is starting with a lighter tone and then I'm going to get darker as I move along. When I finish this one I'll show you another version that I did where the base was green and I'm using Van Dyke Brown for the shadow details here. I am trying to keep the shadow to the shell of the acorn and also to the underneath of the acorn which is going to hopefully help to give it some shape. Every time I add another layer I'm making sure that it's thicker than the last layer so it sits on top nicely. And then once that paint is all on there and all established I'm going to use my brush just to lift out a couple of highlights along the top edge and I think it was at that point that this really started to take shape. And here we have the green example and this is just to show you that it doesn't really matter what colour you start with as your base. The thing that kind of makes these look more realistic is the shadow detail and also lifting out of some of the highlights. That's what really establishes the shape of the acorn and just makes it look a bit more realistic I think. I think this is coming along quite nicely so we're going to move on to the next sketch and that's going to be another type of mushroom I'm not sure the type of mushroom that this actually is but we're going to start with some new gamboge for it and create that semicircle shape similar to the second fly agaric that we did and just fill that in i'm using a lighter version of it for the stalk of this mushroom so i'm just watering it down a little bit so it doesn't turn out so bright and then the idea with this one is just to make the colour a little bit darker at every layer. So I'm adding some more new gamboge and some Van Dyke Brown into the mix to make it darker each time. And I'm dropping that on top of what I did before and that's going to spread out and create a nice blended effect. I'm adding some shadow detail to the stalk and I'm also going to put a couple of dots on there as a little bit of detail. Once again, I think one of the things that really finishes this off and ties everything together nicely with this painting is lifting out the highlights and adding in some really dark shadow details. Um, that helps to give it form. So I'm using pure Van Dyke Brown for this for some of the darkest areas and I lifted out a little highlight on the right hand side of the cap of the mushroom as well. So I think if we're going for an autumn theme it's only right that we have some more leaf examples. This is a different type of leaf, I think this probably looks a bit more like a sycamore one. Um, for this it really doesn't matter what colours you use, autumn leaves come in all shapes and sizes and colours so you can use whatever you want for this. Just start out with a lighter colour to begin with and then get your brighter and darker colours to sit on top of that. Um, and you can have a, a lot of fun with this. I'm just using my brush now to outline the shape of the leaf. I'm leaving lots of gaps, it's got a nice jagged edge and hopefully that's going to make it look a bit more realistic rather than having a straight line all the way around. Once I've established that shape I'm going to colour in the centre with the same colour, leaving some white gaps so it's not just a case of colouring in the lines, it's going to give it a bit more character and make it hopefully look a bit more interesting with those white gaps in the middle. Thank you. 
Once again, I'm scratching in a couple of leaf details just to add in the veins there. And then once I've finished with this one, I'm going to do another example next to it. I'll keep that sped up so it doesn't take too long. But just to show you how different you can make these, you can do them different shapes and different colours and just have fun with them. I'm adding in a few darker spots and putting some splatter details over the top of this just to finish it off and then we're ready to move on to the next one. I guess it's not really autumn without including a pumpkin in this so that's going to be my next painting. Of all the paintings that I did I think this is the one I'd probably do a bit differently next time but have a look and see what you think. So I started out with this colour as the base. This is a really nice um, kind of light green brown colour so there's uh, French ultramarine and some new gamboge mixed in there. I'm doing my orange colours over the top so there's more red involved in this and they're thicker layers that are just going to sit on top of that lighter background. Background. You want to create some crescent shapes facing in towards the centre of the pumpkin and every time I put another layer on it's getting a little bit darker and a little bit thicker. I'm not adding the darker details over the whole pumpkin because I want to preserve those highlights as well. I start to add some Van Dyke brown towards the very end of the darker layers um, and get a little bit more red in those orange layers just for a bit more detail and interest. I added the stalk by putting some French ultramarine in that orange mix and it was at this point I thought this looks a lot like an apple. Uh, before the stalk it looked a lot like a peeled orange. <laughs> um, so I tried to adjust it a little bit to make it look more pumpkin like at the end. I tried to widen out the edges, I think that's probably one of the issues. Um, although pumpkins do come in different shapes and sizes so it's not completely inaccurate. Um, so I added more paint to the edges and I also lifted out a few areas as well to preserve some highlights and just get those edges back in. I think that made a large amount of difference and it definitely looks a bit more like a pumpkin and a bit less like an apple at the end. <laughs> Next up I have a horse chestnut and I'm creating one inside a shell and another one next to it outside the shell. I'm starting out with green for this so mixing French ultramarine with the Hansa yellow light and some new gamboge and then I'm going to add some darker green along the bottom to indicate a shadow and lift out some of the colour around the edge because that's usually a little bit lighter to give it some form. I'm dotting in the colour so you can still see some of the lighter areas underneath rather than just painting across the whole thing. I added some orange in there as well because it's autumn so why not let's have some orange mixed in with that green. I also decided to scratch in some details so I scratched out a few of the spikes around the edges and because I scratched in a few details on the inside of the shell as well. Um, sorry not on the inside but just not around the edge of the shell that added a little bit of texture and then it was time to add in the horse chestnut itself so this brown is a mixture of red and blue and a little bit of new gamboge I think that gives it a really nice uh, reddy brown tone to it that's going to form the base and then I'm going to put some darker layers on top of that and everything I do with the uh, horse chestnut on the inside of the shell I'm going to do the same to the one on the outside With each layer it gets a little bit darker so I'm adding in some really dark details onto the shell of the horse chestnut now and then I'm going to make the actual horse chestnut itself a bit darker. I'm going to lift out some colour too just to preserve some highlights and that's going to help to give it some form and make it look nice and shiny. We've 
got some Van Dyke Brown for some of the really dark shadow details and then I think we're pretty much done with this one. So moving on to the next one, these are probably the simplest things that I did in this entire painting. So we're just adding a couple of berries in there now. I've kept this to an odd number because I think that looks a little bit better uh, for some reason. <laughs> and I used red for the berries and now I'm adding in a stalk with some brown. There's probably a mixture of Van Dyke brown and whatever was left on the palette for that one. It's a little lighter at the moment so I can add some darker details in later. I drop in some darker red at the bottom of the berries to give a bit of dimension and add a bit more Van Dyke Brown to the branches for some shadow. And that's pretty much it for this one, so a really nice simple loose design. I don't know if apple is necessarily one of the first things you think of when you think of autumn, but there's definitely plenty out there on the trees at the moment. And my pumpkin painting demonstrated my ability to paint apples, so I thought I'd give one a go anyway. I'm starting out in a really similar way as to how I started the pumpkin with a really light green base, and then I'm gonna use that to build upon it. So I'm gonna add darker colors and kind of stripe them upwards, indicating the shape of the apple. So I'm gonna try and curve some of those lines so it looks a bit more three-dimensional. I'm using some darker green in here. I'm gonna put some red in there as well and some Van Dyke Brown. But um, these kind of apples come in lots of different colors. So you can add different colors to yours and see what you end up with. The stalk has a little Van Dyke brown in it um, mixed with some of the oranges and reds we used in the apple and then I'm going to create a little leaf to go on it as well. I'm adding more French ultramarine in with some of those orange colours to get this really nice dark green spiky leaf that we're going to add here. And then I'm going to finish this off by just adding in some darker stripes into the apple. Because everything's still wet they should blend out nicely and not stand out too much. And then I'm going to lift out some highlights as well to help to show you the form of the apple so it looks more 3D. So I have one space left and I'm going to finish off this painting with another mushroom. This one, again, I'm not sure exactly what type it is, but I have painted the cap of the mushroom in a similar way. It's a semicircle, but it's a bit more rounded and I'm painting in the stalk underneath as well, all in the same colour. It's quite a neutral colour, so I've mixed my blue and red and yellow together to get this one. I've made a darker version of it, increasing the concentration of red and blue for the dots. And then I'm going to dot on another layer over the top of that, making it darker still. So even more red and blue in that one and some Van Dyke Brown to finish it off. And this is probably one of the easiest mushrooms I think I painted. It was really fun to do and really quick. So it's a really nice um, exercise. It's a really nice painting just to try out. We're very almost finished now, so I'm just going to add some finishing touches to some of these. I'm going to put some white gouache dots onto the fly agaric, and I'm going to use some purple shadow tones just to underline some of those bigger dots there, and they're going to act as shadows. I'm also going to use some Van Dyke Brown and some of that purple shadow tone just to put in a couple of dark areas on some of the other paintings to finish them off. I'm really not trying to go overboard here because I don't want to ruin anything, but it's just going to help to indicate some of the really dark shadow tones that maybe got a little bit lighter as the paint has dried since we finished them.
And there we have it, a finished painting full of lovely little autumn watercolours. I really hope you enjoyed this. I know it was quite different to what we've done before. Um, please let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, if you like this style of painting, if you like to do lots of loose style paintings rather than more detailed pieces, or if you like a bit of both. Um, was this too many to do all at once? Um, would you like this cutting down and maybe just doing a few selections at a time? Um, I'd love to know what you think. I definitely enjoyed working on some looser, simpler styles of painting. I felt like if I got one wrong, it was not so much of an effort to try and redo it because it, it didn't take me that much time. Um, so I really enjoyed the process. I hope you like these two. I will be back again next Wednesday with another tutorial. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again then.